Best-selling author Jane Green is the author of 17 novels, including 16 New York Times bestsellers. Her latest is Summer Secrets, and previous novels have included The Beach House, Second Chance, Jemima J, and Tempting Fate. She has over 10 million books in print worldwide. She's a graduate of the French Culinary Institute in New York and recently used Kickstarter to create a cookbook called Good Taste, Good Food, A Good Life. Jane Green, thanks so much for coming today. Thank you for having me. So, first of all, Summer Secrets. Yeah. What made you write about addiction in this story? Uh, well, I've always been fascinated by addiction and I've been around 12-step programs for many, many years. Um, and I've definitely struggled with things myself, but not alcohol. And I was diagnosed with um, Lyme disease, chronic Lyme and Hashimoto's disease a few years ago. And the more I read about nutrition, the more I realized that I, I wasn't getting better with the antibiotics and with the, the medications. And I realized I'd have to make some significant dietary changes. So I gave up uh, sugar, carbohydrates, dairy, and alcohol. In short, everything that makes everything. life worthwhile. <laughs> um, but I decided that because I had given up alcohol, I would go to AA meetings because the only requirement for membership is the desire to stop drinking. And I knew there was wisdom to be found in those rooms. Mm -hmm. And I found it transformative. The basic tenets mm -hmm. of the 12 step mm -hmm. program, gratitude, humility, taking it a day at a time owning your own behavior, keeping your side of the street clean. And mm. after a while I thought, you know, I really want to tackle this in a, in a real way. Mm -hmm. I want to write about somebody who's dealing with this and really, really show people what it's like because I think it, it's so often misunderstood. Mm -hmm. I do think there is such a misperception of what an alcoholic is and it could be any of us. Yes. It's us, it's our sisters, it's our mothers, it's our fathers. And, and I really wanted to explore that. A girl who is flawed, like we are all flawed, and, and she's just the thing that she struggles with is drink. And again, she's not, she's not passing out at work, but she's, in her 20s, she's drinking too much and she's mm -hmm. partying too hard. And when everybody stops, she doesn't. Right, yeah. right. And you managed to portray it in a way that still kept such sympathy for the character, yeah. which I, I think was a real achievement because you could easily lose that sympathy for someone who's behaving yeah. badly. I think that's always the challenge of writing the novels, the kinds of novels that I write, is you're often writing about people who do terrible things and make egregious mistakes. Mm. And people like Gabby in Tempting Fate, who's married to the best man in the world and has an affair. And you have to somehow find whatever it is within those characters that is relatable, mm -hmm. that causes the reader to empathize, to understand. You may not approve, mm -hmm. but you can understand. Right, and it's familiar to you. Yeah. Yeah. And that actually leads me right into my next question, because um, a reviewer on Amazon said that your books suck her in like a Dyson vacuum cleaner <laughs> okay. and hold her tightly. Yeah. And I think that's exactly why you know what you just said making a character so relatable yeah that there's no judgment even though you might judge someone you know right. well that's it's interesting that you said that I did an event in the summer with Ellen Hildebrand and and somebody asked her how she was able to write the stories that she writes and she said I have we have we writers who write in this genre tend to have a tremendous amount of empathy without judgment and it is the lack of judgment that enables us to take these flawed characters and present them to you in a way that makes them relatable. So um, also you've just completed a successful Kickstarter yeah. campaign. So yeah. tell us a little bit about that and right. why you did it and okay, how it so, worked Okay, um, so I wanted to write a cookbook. And even though I have success in novels, mm -hmm. I really didn't know whether anyone would take me seriously with a cookbook, so I decided to publish it myself. And I put together an amazing team mm -hmm. and, and a fantastic photographer and art director and just wonderful people. And I went ahead and started self-publishing this cookbook. 
And then my agent suggested that we sell it through Kickstarter. And so what that means is you have to give Kickstarter an exclusive edition. So it's only available through Kickstarter. Uh -huh. So we did this as a collector's edition with, with a linen cover mm, and vellum beautiful. inserts mm. and, and, you know, full color. And I offered it to people through Kickstarter. So the book is $25 where actually in store it would probably be comparable books of $40. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I sold it through Kickstarter and I did it, I self-published so I could have creative control because I thought if I can produce something really beautiful, then maybe the publishers will sit up and take notice in a way that they wouldn't if I just said, hey, you know, novelist interested in a cookbook. Right. I did it to gauge the reaction, you know, mm -hmm. it, do mm -hmm. people want this? I had no Absolutely, idea as yeah. far as I, I, it could have been, I was going to go ahead and self publish it anyway. Mm -hmm. I thought, but then, but then I realized if I didn't have any interest, if Kickstarter didn't work, then clearly people wouldn't want a cookbook mm -hmm. from me mm -hmm. and there would be no point or little point in going ahead. And you know, the way I looked at it is I self published and I used Kickstarter. I also had a tremendous amount of personal contact with the people buying this book, which I really loved. They yes. had a lot of input. They chose the cover. Yeah. Um, but I, I really saw it as, this is no different from my publishers putting a book into Barnes and Noble mm -hmm. and somebody goes into Barnes and Noble and pays, you know, $20, $25 mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. my novel. If they like it, they buy it. Right. If they don't, and they the don't. publisher is, you know, slowly, hopefully reimbursed mm -hmm. for whatever it's cost them to put out a book. Mm -hmm. I was the publisher mm -hmm. and I sold it through Kickstarter. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I, I really love what we have created. And Kickstarter, you know, I'm much too old to understand about these new websites. And no, this new you're not. no, but I really <laughs> am. I knew nothing about it. Although, as I started thinking about it, I, I dived into Kickstarter yep. and I backed a number of campaigns and I really love the things I've backed actually and I feel that I am part of those campaigns. Yep. So I, I, I totally started to understand this whole new world. This whole mm -hmm. and it's a whole new world. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And I think publishing has changed so much. Mm -hmm. And we don't really know how to keep up with the changes or where mm -hmm. it's going or what to do. Mm -hmm. And I think you have to be open to less conventional ways of doing mm -hmm. things. And you have to take action on your own behalf. Oh, well, yeah. absolutely, yeah. 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 Well, that's wonderful. Yeah. Thanks so much for coming today. Oh, thank you. Thank you.